Today, we're going to talk about a little game called Starfield. You might have heard of it. This game has been the talk of the internet lately. Everybody has their opinion on it. Bethesda, the company that made Starfield, is one of those video game companies that people just love to meme on. Maybe not as hard as some companies like EA, Ubisoft, and Blizzard, but Bethesda has its fair share of detractors. And for good reason. You can watch so many funny highlight videos of all of the glitches their games have, and people have been notoriously very upset with the expectations that they felt like their games just have not lived up to. This goes all the way back to the Fallout series. Fallout 3 is when Bethesda took over the series and made it a first person shooter from an isometric CRPG. A lot of people were mad at Bethesda for that. A lot of people were mad at Bethesda when they made Oblivion saying that it wasn't as good as Morrowind. There wasn't as many RPG mechanics. It was made for the masses and it kind of dumbed things down. Which is funny because that's the exact same criticism that people have about Skyrim. And then people would just point back to Oblivion and say that Oblivion had better RPG mechanics than Skyrim. But then there's always the people that will say Morrowind is the best RPG. And you know, basically, this is just a company that has upset a lot of people. And Starfield is no exception. So it might be rightfully sort of confusing for people that are just trying to check Starfield out. For the average gamer just looking at Starfield, it looks amazing. They think that, hey, this it looks really freaking good. Why are people hating on it? Is, is, is it not good? It can be kind of confusing. The review scores are from near perfect to something of more average and it's just kind of a lot to go through. But now that I've played about 50 hours of the game, I feel like it's time for Genji Gear to come in and save the internet, put the final word on Starfield and let you guys know once and for all, is Starfield a good game? So this is the part of the video where I actually give you my opinion, and for those of you that don't agree with it, you're gonna stop the video, go in the comments, and tell me how stupid I am, hopium, copium, all of those fun words can be used and whatnot, but I actually loved Starfield. I think it's an absolutely great game. Now for those of you that are still here, let's talk about the nuances of it. Is it a objectively good game or is it just a game that I just love subjectively? That's kind of always the needle that you're threading when you're reviewing anything. This game, if you don't know this, you probably already know this, but this game takes place in the universe. There's over a thousand planets that you can go to. And some of the criticisms that I've heard is that, hey, there's nothing on this planet. There's nothing here. There's not a lot going on. And that's the point. There are some amazing, cool, fun, interesting, unique things to find in this universe, but they're not gonna be on every single planet. If every planet was full of just a bunch of cool, interesting, unique encounters, well, first off, they would never be able to finish that game. And second off, it wouldn't feel special when you came across to them because you would just be expecting it every single time. So yes, there are a lot of moments where you're gonna be walking around on a planet there's not gonna be a lot going on. But what makes this game unique is that you don't have to do that. You can just get on your ship and go to the next planet, go do the next thing, do a mission. There are so many different handcrafted custom missions that you can do. If you just wanna do the main quest and all the side missions, that alone will take you around 50 hours. But then there's also that backyard with a horizon that you can just explore in. And I think that you really just need to decide for yourself if that's the kind of thing that is exciting for you. You know, I think the people that love Bethesda games that are gonna love this game, they already know that they're gonna love this game. If you've played Skyrim, if you've played the Fallout games and you really loved the exploration and the adventure aspect of these games, the discovery, then you're gonna love this game. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. That doesn't mean that it's a perfect game. That means that, yeah, there's gonna be bugs. There's gonna be some things that are a little bit repetitive. There's gonna be a lot of inventory management, which is not always the most fun thing to deal with. But the game has a lot more going for it than just that. While Bethesda has been criticized that their leveling up systems have not been very RPG-esque, that you couldn't really create a very unique character, you really can in Starfield. It takes a lot of time, but the perk system does really allow you to role play and get good at different things. I will say though, for my playthrough, I wasn't able to really get super deep into any one of the perk systems. I kind of grabbed one or two of each. And I think I was around level 30 or so when I beat the game. The game does have a new game plus where you can really start diving deep into those systems. And I think that's great for somebody that wants to play this game for 100 hours, 150 hours. But I would say that it's gonna maybe be a little bit difficult to do a deep role play 
on your first playthrough. Another thing that this game has going for it, I would say that really stood out to me, was the fact that the movement and just playing the game feels really good. Id Software, the company that made Doom Eternal, did help them a bit with the graphics and the, the feeling of the game. They were a little bit vague with that. I think they didn't want to necessarily give Id Software a lot of credit because they wanted to credit their own team. But if you've played Doom Eternal, you know how you can kind of just glide around. You feel really mobile in Doom Eternal. I would say Starfield kind of like that too. You do feel... It feels glidey, but in a good way, like in a way that it's very responsive and that you can kind of get around. You're more mobile. It, it just feels better than any of their previous games. I think the soundtrack is amazing. I think time will tell if it's as classic as some of their other soundtracks, but I think it definitely has the potential to stand the test of time. So is Starfield a good game? I, I knew I was gonna love this game. I have put two, 300 hours into Skyrim one 200 hours into oblivion i love games that give you choice that let you play them how you want i think going forward over the next 10 years there's going to be a great modding community with this game i'm really excited to see what we're going to have in store for us there but i think overall what this game does for me is something that almost no other game can in a bethesda game i feel like i can play and i don't mean like i can play the game of course i'm playing the game but you know, like when you were a kid, when you were eight or nine years old, you'd run around with sticks and make believe and pretend and you'd be playing. You can do that for hours and hours and hours. I feel like this game lets me do that again. It gives me that feeling that I had when I was a kid. When you would play just for the sake of playing, you weren't trying to beat something, there was no end. I don't feel like I need to have any kind of objectives. I don't need to beat anything or accomplish anything when I'm playing Starfield. Though there are things you can set goals. You can go and try to beat a storyline. You can say, hey, I want to have the biggest base. I want to have a fleet of ships. You can do all these things, but I, I don't even care if I achieve any of those things. Just being in that world and just playing. I mean, for me, that that's a 10 out of 10. Now, is Starfield objectively a 10 out of 10? Like, no, there's some problems with it. And if you want to be nitpicky, there's plenty of things to be nitpicky about this game. And, and I don't even mean to use that word nitpicky. It's like, Things can bug you and they're legitimate and those things can matter enough for you that they ruin your experience and that's too bad. But there is a giant handful of people that, hey, when the AI glitches out, it really doesn't bug me that much. It just doesn't, I'm sorry. It's funny to look at in a YouTube video and laugh at and point at, but at the end of the day, I'm having fun and it doesn't ruin my experience. And there's other legit criticisms like, hey, you can't fly from space to a planet, and when you're on the planet, you can't fly around, you can only be on foot. There's a game called Star Citizen. In Star Citizen, you can do that. You can fly from space to the planet, and it takes like 10 minutes. And don't get me wrong, I actually think Star Citizen's cool and I like that, but I've done that enough in Star Citizen to understand that it gets so monotonous and pointless, and it really can kind of take you out of an experience of just having fun and playing. There's only so many times you can enter or re-enter space where it's just like, hey, this is not really adding a lot to the experience. And I think you can rightfully say, well, like, hey, I wish you could just have the choice to do it. Sure, I get that. But there's only so many resources that Bethesda has, and they cut that out so that they could focus on the other things that this game does great. So, hey, that can be upsetting, and that can keep you from enjoying this game, and that's legit that's fine. You should try out Star Citizen. Another legit criticism people have is, hey, why aren't there vehicles? Why can't you run around on like a Jeep or something when you're on planet? A fellow YouTuber morphologist did a great video, I'll, I'll actually link it, that explains why he didn't think that there's going to be any vehicles in Starfield. It really just comes down to resources and hey, you know, it'd be great to just put everything in this game, but you're going to have to stop somewhere and just have a limitation so that you can just work on what you do have. And what you do have is a thousand different planets to explore, hundreds of hours of different storylines to experience, a really in-depth base builder and ship builder, awesome first-person combat and RPG elements. And story-wise, I would say it's a very good story. It does get better as you go, a little bit slow at first. So I hope that gives you a little bit more of a background and understanding about the controversial nature of this game and whether it is a good game or isn't a good game and whether it's a good game 
game for you. And if this video was helpful for you, please let me know in the comments. If you think I'm wrong and stupid, blah, 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 please leave that in the comments too. Either way, please consider liking, subscribing, all that fun stuff. But before I go, if I were to give it a number, a rating, you know, I think like objectively, if I'm like considering all of the flaws, I think around an 8.5 is very fair. But for the child in me that just enjoys playing, exploring, running around, having fun, doing whatever I want in a sandbox game, it's a 10 out of 10. This is an experience that only a few video game companies even try to attempt anymore. And I'm really, really happy they did.